We are very excited to have uh, Sean May, the CEO of Converge, here along with Carl Smith, uh, their CFO. Uh, Sean and his team have put together a remarkable track record of 19 acquisitions since the third quarter of 2018 in building a 1.5 billion run rate company. You know, we are very bullish on both the organic and the inorganic growth outlook for the company, um, believing it is poised to build on its success. We are still in the you know, early to mid innings. There's a lot more room here to grow. You know, our report headers typically have something to do with copy, paste, accrete, repeat, price target raised. We look forward to, do, to doing many more of those as the company has a long runway. We did want to highlight that the shares of CTS are at roughly 873. They're pushing their 52-week highs of 877. They have returned a remarkable 76% year-to-date and an even more remarkable 573% over the past year. Now, I'm very pleased to hand it over to you, Sean. Uh, welcome. Thanks, Rob. <clears throat> Appreciate it. So, um, Converge, so, it, and uh, I believe it's Carl driving. Can we get to the third slide, please? And that would be Mohammed. Oh, Mohammed. Oh, excellent. So, thank you, Mohammed. So, um, Converge Technology Solutions is a company that is the fastest growing IT service provider in North America. Uh, and we're very proud of that fact. We have grown our adjusted EBITDA by 90% plus every year. So each year since we were founded three and a half years ago. Um, <clears throat> we recently gave out our, our Q1 results, which again, um, did that. We grow through acquisition, but really the key growth for us is on the recurring revenue side. And we were thrilled to recently announce that Thomas Volk, who used to run a company called Cancom, one of the, the companies that I have modeled our managed services strategy after, um, who left Cancom as their CEO last Q1, is now our chairman. Um, and uh, Converge, last year, we buy companies with debt and working capital, so we don't require equity to buy companies. So we entered last year as a highly leveraged company. Um, we last year raised 200 million took 20 million of cost up by integrating the back offices moved our abl from nine percent down to two and a half percent um bought five more companies um and the results that we continue to uh produce will be grown by our expansion into europe now so we're incredibly proud of what we have accomplished and thank you rob for kind of outlining those. Um, we announced a $172.5 million financing uh, last week that we did. We now have the an incredibly strong balance sheet, which will allow us to uh, enable an aggressive growth strategy in Europe as well. Next slide, please. So you'll see that Converge, um, when I set out the strategy for how we would develop, <clears throat> I wanted to hit all of the NFL cities uh, in the US because that's where our customers are. And this map shows that we've done an incredible job of doing that. Um, we're not all the way there yet. So you, if your favorite NFL, NFL team is not represented there, then uh, hopefully we'll be there soon. We also are getting an incredible amount of recognition from the industry. Um, at IBM Think, we are IBM's number one growth partner in North America on the software side. People might think of IBM as a dinosaur on the hardware side, but on the software side, they're world class on things like analytics and some of the, the high margin services that we provide. We're the fastest growing IT service provider in North America. We're also now, we've just been released from the 50th largest to the 39th largest, which tells you there's very few large partners and a lot of very small partners. Next slide, please, Mohammed. 
We buy companies that provide digital infrastructure. That's hardware, software, services, and data centers. And then we change them into companies that provide advanced analytics, cybersecurity, cloud and managed services. You can tell how we transition these companies through our gross profit percentage. Next slide, please, Mahalan. So we buy resellers for five times EBITDA because they're selling into the data center. We turn them into a much more valuable cloud and managed service provider enabled by Red Hat and VMware. They have something called Kubernetes implementations that allow an application to not know where it exists. So you can put them on the public cloud providers of which Microsoft Azure is the best one for Windows um, applications and front office applications. AWS and GCP are better for back office ones. We uh, have our own managed services, which is our highest gross profit percentage um, offering where we host applications on behalf of our customers. And then during the pandemic, our VMware managed services like VMC on AWS were great uh, sellers allowing people to access applications remotely in a secure fashion. Next slide, please. So when you look at the IT services space, the way you can tell us apart is you look at our gross profit percentage. The people that sell hardware, and there's some great ones like CDW and Insight, make between 13 to 16% gross profit. In Q3 last year, we had over 27% gross profit, 7% EBITDA, grew to 80% EBITDA in Q4, which means I look much more like a global SI and Accenture CGI than I do like a reseller. I buy resellers and I transition them into a consulting cloud and managed service provider. Next slide, please. So this three-phase plan, I'm very uh, kind of sentimental about. I'm very proud of, I created this plan in April of 2017. This year, we complete this plan. We will be over 2 billion run rate revenue. We're at 1.5 billion now with a bunch of acquisitions and over 100 million of EBITDA, which we're at now um, on a run rate basis. Phase one was create a, a broader geographical coverage in Canada, US. Phase two was build up those capabilities around hybrid IT. Phase three was take the cost out in scale. We took 20 million of cost out last year. I will in, on June 23rd be presenting our plan to go from 2 billion to 5 billion in sales in four years. Next slide, please. So, we are operators, but there is a financial engineering aspect to the company. I do not require equity to buy a company. On average, a hardware centric VAR makes 3% EBITDA margins. So per 100 million of sales has 3 million of, of EBITDA. We pay up to five times or 15 million of purchase price per 100 million of revenue. We structure the deals so that 50 to 60% of that is upfront, call it 9 million of purchase price upfront, and then 6 million over a three year earn out. We buy them cash free, debt free, with normal working capital. So there's a clean balance sheet. Um, we use our asset backed lending facility, our ABL, to finance their invoices and inventory to hand them the check for the $9 million. We have not used any of our own equity to hand them that check. And then we use their own profits to pay the earn out. So no equity required. Then because they're small, they receive payments from their customers on 54 days, but have to pay the suppliers on 45 days. The day after we acquire them, Ingram Micro gives me 75 day terms, which means per 100 million of revenue, I surface 3 million of cash, increased payables and increased cash, reducing the 9 million of debt I had up front to 6 million. And then, so I bought them with debt and working capital. I moved their EBITDA margins from 3% to 4.5% through volume rebates. That's the way that IBM, Cisco, and Ingram reward partners who um, uh, are larger. I then last year took 2% of cost out, 1% from the back office, 1% from the front office, moving us to 6.5% EBITDA margins. 
and then through cross-selling, higher margin cloud managed services, I can get my EBITDA percentage uh, up to 9%. I can get my gross profit up to, to 30%. And again, last year, we didn't do acquisitions. You saw that in the numbers. Next slide, please. Converge buys four to six companies in North America per year. We bought two in 17, four in 18, five in 19, five in 20. We bought three so far this year. In addition to the companies we buy in North America, we will start acquiring very soon companies in Europe, focusing on Germany and the UK. Um, talk about our European expansion. I focus on companies that drink beer, like Germany, UK, Benelux, Nordics, and Ireland. And you avoid companies that you want to go on vacation, but loans to drink wine, France and Southern Europe. The problem is you can't integrate those companies effectively. So you should hear more about our German strategy very soon. Next slide, please. Converge is really good at doing two things that most companies really struggle at. We're great at cross-selling. We're great at integration. Last year, I took 20 million of cost out by integrating the back offices of the companies I had acquired so far. In March, we took about 8 million of additional cost by integrating the companies I just acquired. And here's the schedule for migrating their ERP systems to a common system to take additional cost out. You see it in our numbers. We, we are fantastic at doing this. Next slide, please. So Converge's market is the mid-market and the upper end of the SMB space. Most companies like CGI, Accenture, et cetera, only focus on the 150 billion large enterprise space. We focus on the 650 billion mid-market space and the upper end of the 400 billion SMB space. Call it 800 billion of SM, uh, total adjustable market. That means our revenue is 1% really of our total addressable market. When you look at the um, sectors we sell into, we've got in Q1, it was 22% uh, government, 25% technology, 13% financial services, 12% healthcare, 6% manufacturing, an increase in retail to 9% showing the comeback and 13% of other, which no one sector makes up more than 2%. Our top 10 customers make up less than 20% of our revenue. So wonderful diversified customer base. Next slide, please. The most valuable revenue have, we have is our recurring revenue. And of that, our managed services revenue is the key part of that. So in Q1, on an annualized basis, we had 64 million of uh, managed services revenue. These are three-year contracts paid monthly that um, uh, we make over 40% gross profit uh, to. We target that sector to get to 100 million of revenue by the end of the year and 50% of gross profit. We sold 75 million of public cloud resell. That's Amazon, Google, and Microsoft, where we're reselling their service, but we only recognize that revenue as net. I invoice 75 million on a year. I recognize less than 10% of that because they provide the service. And then because we sell around a quarter of our revenues software, this software annual uh, piece for patches and upgrades is 54% of my recurring revenue. So 305 million of annualized recurring revenue nets down to about 115, 120 million of, in my net revenue, but that grew from 190 million. This is a key component of our organic growth and most valuable revenue we have. One of the reasons we are the fastest growing IT service provider in North America <clears throat> is we excel at cross-selling and net new logos. We have the highest net new logos in the industry. In Q4, we had a, an incredible 71. We beat it even in Q1 at 80. These are customers we have never sold to before that we are uh, getting revenue for, for the first time. How do we do that? One of the key ways is our vendors partner with us to hold technical workshops, such as Red Hat's Ansible and OpenShift where we'll go into a region, a city, and invite mid-market customers to come to us. Large enterprise customers will not come to you, mid-market will. Um, and last year we saw over 400 customers. Um, our executive briefings where our executives invite um, uh, 
come in to talk about the capabilities we have. We buy companies. Those people don't know that what we can do, but if they bring an executive like Greg Bard, our president, to talk about our managed services, our DevOps, our cybersecurity and managed services, these are how they can highlight the capabilities to allow the cross sell. And as I mentioned, our recurring revenue grew 61% year on year. Next slide, please. So I actually hand this over to Carl Smith, our CFO, to go through our financials. Great, thanks, Sean. So this is a really good snapshot of our growth um, from FY18 to FY20. Our revenue increased 38% to 950 million. Our gross margin increased to 24.6% from 23.5% last year and from 19% in FY18. And it's that expansion of the gross margin that really demonstrates the organic growth coming from our higher margin cloud and managed services. As Sean mentioned, our EBITDA increased 91% to 60.5 million. And as a percentage, it increased to 6.4% from 3.6% in FY18. And EBITDA is a really good measurement of free cash flow for us. We're not a high CapEx company. We don't require cash for working capital. In fact, working capital is a source of funds for us. We get paid from our customers before we pay our suppliers. So when I look at my EBITDA, about 70% of that turns into free cash flow. And while we don't provide guidance, I do have eight analysts following us and consensus on the street is $100 million of EBITDA this year and a billion five of revenue. And that's based on the acquisitions that we've done to date. Next slide. Our Q1. Great quarter, our revenue increased 28% to 310 million. My adjusted EBITDA increased 70% to just under 19 million. And as a percentage of revenue was 6.1% up from 4.6% last year. Next slide. I have a very strong balance sheet. This is as at March 31st. As Sean mentioned at the beginning of FY20, um, we started the year with a really highly leveraged balance sheet. We had expensive debt. We were paying about 9.5% interest. We were about five times EBITDA. We we're quite comfortable with that. We have really good visibility into our revenue. And certainly as more of our revenue is coming from recurring, um, we have even more comfort with our ability to generate cash flow. The last year, at the start of the year, we were highly leveraged. We were probably about 90% retail shareholders and we had very expensive debt. If you look at where we are today, we have a low leverage balance sheet. In fact, we're probably under levered. My debt cost is now down to two and a half percent interest as opposed to over nine. I'm gonna say we're $10 million of interest costs this year. I had $68 million in cash at the end of March, um, 49 in restricted that was uh, held for an acquisition we closed on April 1st. I had 140 million drawn on my low cost ABL. And then just recently, um, last week, we closed another $170, $170 million equity financing priced at 750. So we're well capitalized for our expansion into Europe. Next slide. Our share capital summary, this is slightly out of date. Um, there's about 188 million shares fully um, diluted now as a result of the raise. Uh, that is a fully diluted number. There are no options and there are no warrants outstanding. Management owns about 9%. Each quarter, um, the executive team and the management team, we use portion of our variable compensation to buy shares in the open market. So we're constantly increasing our ownership in the open market. And I think we're fully aligned with our shareholders. Next slide. And I'll turn it back to Sean. Thanks, Carl. <clears throat> so the team that has done this uh, is an incredible mix of people that I've known for a very long time and people that uh, have come through the acquisitions. So Gord McMillan, our chair, um, <clears throat> I've known since I went to Queens as Don Cuthbert's in our CTO as well. I've known since the late 80s. Gord is exceptional at getting acquisitions from LOI to close. 
Don sets our, our, our technical direction and our, uh, he runs Canada for us. Corey Reed, our COO, who I started my first job with at Bell Northern Research up in 1992, um, he's the one responsible for all the integration of the back office, the 20 million we took of cost out, the 8 billion so far this year and the rest. But Carl Smith, our CFO, only joined us in March of last year. And what a super job he's done in our analyst coverage, equity raises, uh, moving the ABL, done a super job. Greg Brard, our president, came out of the Lighthouse acquisition and runs all sales, marketing, and engineering. And he's the one responsible for all the cross sell. Kerry Hash and, and Tommy Watley uh, came out of my last consolidation and do a super job in enterprise sales and services. Dini Patel came out of IBM. Uh, great job on the, the Red Hat partnership. And then Rhonda Haynes came from the first acquisition. And I got to say, what a super job in this changing time, keeping all of our employees safe and yet uh, meeting all of the requirements around COVID. She's done an amazing job. This team last year, so we started last year as a highly leveraged company um, in March facing COVID. We cross-sold, we integrated all the companies, we took 20 million of cost out, we changed the ABL from 9% to 2.5, we raised 200 million of equity and bought five companies. This was a pretty incredible team. So that's all I got, Rob. So any questions would be great. Awesome. Thank you, Sean. Um, given the, the, the conference here, one of the themes is uh, leverage to a, a post-COVID economy. Uh, COVID has represented both tailwinds, but you know headwinds in the form of challenges, particularly in the managed services. Can you talk about how you see things unfolding in a open access economy with an economic rebound in uh, North America in particular? Absolutely. So last year, our Q1 was <clears throat> inflated slightly by people pulling spend in from Q2 into Q1 because they wanted certainty of delivery. Q2 was heavily impacted by COVID, including New York. Even though we grew, um, we were impacted. This year, even though our Q1 was very good, our Q2 year on year will be very different because of the, it'll be a normal year, which is normally stronger than Q1. And then we see all the coming back to work in the US. 75% plus of our business is US based. So uh, you would expect to see as the fastest growing IT service provider in North America, exceptional growth, um, especially in Q2 and then Q3, because of the impact that COVID had last year, even though we grew, we didn't grow at nearly the rates. What, what did grow was the managed services revenue, the, re, uh, the remote revenue, um, because as people move there, you will continue to see us invest heavily in that area um, and grow that. As we said, we're in the low 60 millions of <clears throat> annualized revenue and managed services. We aim to get to 100 million by the end of the year. So you'll expect to hear a lot of that. Cool. And in terms of talking about tailwinds, headwinds, could you talk about your relationship with IBM, what that means uh, for you in Europe, uh, what that means to you in terms of IBM changing its model for distribution partners? So IBM um, <clears throat> made a big mistake about seven years ago, and they decided to reward partners that only sold IBM. So they don't have um, that platform. So it meant that all the Cisco HP and Dell partners moved away from IBM and didn't sell any. IBM excels at software. So Watson, QRadar, Red Hat, these are their stellar products. Last year, we grew our, our software portfolio with IBM by 20%. 35 to 40% of our revenue came from IBM. And they are diversifying their group, spinning off the group that used to compete with us July 1st. It is a massive boost to us. We had 15 million of, of uh, volume rebates, 18 million of transactional rebates around software last year. So it is incredible. We won five awards at IBM Think, the most of any North American partner. IBM Partner of the Year, Red Hat Partner of the Year, Analytics Partner of the Year for the third year running, um, Identity Partner of the Year, and, and a, a Services Partner. Sirius, who's the largest partner, we're the second largest, um, is declining in IBM uh, revenue. The, the top six partner, we were the only one that grew. So mainline used to be third, et cetera. 
don't have our position. And our managed services around IBM's platform iSeries is a major growth area. So um, yeah, you would expect us to be in the kind of shock and awe kind of territory around IBM this year. Okay. Look at that. You, you have a clear track record of success in North America. How do you pick that up and how does that translate in, into Europe, uh, into the UK? Are some of the structural advantages that you have um, leveraged in North America available to you as a relative newcomer to that marketplace? So the wonderful part is, um, yes, having been such a big growth partner in North America, like I think every single vendor partner um, that we've dealt with has either been got a promotion or bought a house. So they've done very well and they would love to exceed that in North America. But I can't say how, um, how proud I am and how privileged I feel to have Thomas Volk join us as chairman on June 23rd, assuming the a shareholder vote goes ahead. Thomas was the CEO of CanCom. The company, if you go back and look at the transcripts, the company have always modeled around managed services as the person in Europe who got it right. Ran worldwide sales for HPE, um, ran Dell uh, UK, Germany, and, and France. Um, royalty in the technology industry in Europe. He's now our chairman, but not a non-exec. He works for us two days a week. And then the companies that we're targeting buying feel privileged to talk to this guy. So in this fragmented industry, I mean, look what we've done. But now with Thomas, um, yeah, it's uh, pretty special. We, we announced Doris um, being hired, Doris Albiez, who ran channels for Dell before that IBM. I met with 64 companies, short list of 16, um, four under NDA. You'll hear stuff soon. We, we got cashed up for a reason. There's not, you know, why did you, you know, take all that equity on board? There's a reason. Um, and, and yep, uh, I feel so honored to have Thomas on board and I can't wait to showcase what we can do in Europe. In, in terms of the European model, um, would it be reasonable to look at valuations around seven times EV debit is the working capital um, extension available to you in the marketplace and how are you positioned as a preferred buyer in that market? So uh, it's all about growth rate. So if you, a reseller that doesn't have cloud grows around GDP growth rates, you can buy them for five, six times. Absolutely in Europe as well. There's a company we're looking at that grows at a hundred percent a year. You're not going to get them. Now I'm very cheap, so I'm going single digit growth, uh, EBITDA multiples anyways. But um, having Thomas and Doris on board for the German companies, the vendors, the help, what we've done so successfully in North America is get the vendor support. When you talk about working capital terms, having Ingram Micro, and what they've done for us in North America, eager to support us in, in Europe, to have IBM and Cisco and Dell eager to support us. Thomas, the CEO of HPE, Anthony Neri, worked with Thomas when he ran worldwide sales. I mean, we are in, in a fragmented space. We are so fortunate to have the people we have at the table. We have done an amazing job in North America, and we haven't hit Europe yet. Cool. And one of the questions that come in, um, how quickly can you realize synergies after acquiring a company? So in North America, uh, it's all first year, right? So we get rebates first 30 days, uh, synergies first year now. Um, in Europe, the first companies we will not realize the front office synergies um, for the first one, two to 10 we will, because you need certain in-country requirements. So the playbook is back office out of Ireland. So all the synergies happen there, you know, the technical Eastern Europe, you'll get those. So we'll get those synergies, but on the first platform acquisition per country, you won't do those in Europe. Um, and but I think there is some uh, question with respect to Bechtel. How can you beat Bechtel in terms of making an acquisition and why would a target go with you perhaps? ahead of Bechtel? That's a great question because Bechtel was bought 
a hundred companies in Germany. And I thought, oh my God, they must have picked over everybody. But when I went there, I realized one, they don't integrate the back office, but any new customer coming in, they give to their top 12 companies. The companies I talked to, none of them want to be bought by Beckler because they know if there's new white space, it'll be given to someone else. So I was amazed at how many companies are available. CanCom after losing Thomas, um, it's kind of drifting and going south, so they don't be bought by them. So with Beckla and CanCom there, I was amazed by how many high quality companies in Germany I'm able to acquire. Cool. And one final question, if I can. Um, you did indicate uh, that with at the AGM, you would be talking about uh, a revised version of your targets, uh, looking at, I believe it was 5 billion in four years. Could you talk a bit more about the cadence of acquisitions in both the UK and North America underlying those ambitious um, targets? Yeah, so four to six a year in North America is sustainable at least the next three years. So that plan will start January 1st next year and go for four years post that. It, we're very comfortable with the four to six a year. We gave the guidance of 400 million Canadian on those. It might be north of that. Um, I believe we can do, but I haven't bought anybody in Europe, but I believe we can do the same cadence in Europe and they'll be larger. So we'll be at more the midpoint. Um, so again, we believe that 2 billion run rate with acquisitions is possible by the end of this year. And then add the North American piece with the same kind of four to six in Europe. Um, and you'll get to kind of that billion year number. Well, your, your ability to deliver on your original plans, which appeared very audacious at the time you came out with them, uh, gives investors uh, uh, a lot of um, confidence in your ability to deliver again. So I would like to thank Sean for being here today. Carl, I would like to thank you. And then uh, we will pass it over to uh, Simon, our Managing Director, Head of Sales and Trading. Sean, Carl, thank you. And uh, Simon, over to you. Thanks, Rob. And say hi to Robbie for me because uh, Robbie's been a great supporter of us. I love talking to the guys that have seen us execute the strategy when they heard about it really early.